I want you to check out my new confectionaries. I think they're gonna sell right through the roof. I call them Chef's Salted Chocolate Balls. Are they good? Try them. Hey, these are good. Yeah, I love your salted chocolate balls, Chef. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week I have a little announcement to make. I'm going to be appearing at Colossal Clusterfest in San Francisco. It's this massive comedy festival, June 2nd through the 4th. It's headlined by Jerry Seinfeld, Bill Burr, Kevin Hart, and I'm going to be participating in a South Park-style chili con carnival cook-off. More information on that after the episode, but for now it's time to make Chef's Chocolate Salty Balls, exactly how he described them in the song, which starts with two tablespoons of cinnamon, two or three egg whites, half a stick of butter melted, oops, I forgot he specifies to stir it with a wooden spoon, add a cup of flour, you'll be in heaven soon, I think is how it goes, a quarter cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, half a cup of brandy, and then he says two or three bags of sugar, which sounds crazy, so I'm just gonna add a ton of sugar. I know this is gonna end in a disaster, but we gotta be accurate. Mix that up with your wooden spoon, as specified, before adding a pinch of vanilla, or I guess a half teaspoon of vanilla, and shaping them into chocolate salty balls, which actually, ironically, don't have any salt in the recipe, but we're gonna bake them at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes, or until, oh, these aren't quite balls, are they? That's fine, let's see if they taste any good. They end up tasting a little bit like old school Italian grandma cookies, but not in a good way. All the booze and cinnamon. So let's see if we can try to make this a little more palatable. We're going to add another cup of flour, a teaspoon each baking powder and baking soda. Mix that all together. And now you'll find we have a dough that we can more properly shape into balls before baking again at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes or until they come out a little bit closer to balls. It's a little bit better. Even with the addition of some much needed kosher salt, the flavor and texture of these was still just off and I know that we can do better. So we're going to take a stick of butter, cube it into the bowl of a stand mixer with two cups of sugar. Patiently cream those together for two to three minutes on high speed with your chin planted comfortably on the top of your stand mixer. Crack three whole eggs in there and again on high speed cream together until light and uh, creamy. And in the meantime, we're going to combine a cup of flour half a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, and a teaspoon and a half each baking powder and kosher salt that we're going to whisk together before slowly adding to the machine on low speed. As that comes together, we're going to add a half teaspoon of vanilla extract, a half cup of buttermilk, and a quarter cup of vegetable oil. Stream that slowly down the side before turning the mixer again onto high speed for two to three minutes or until the batter is light and fluffy. Oil the inside of a cake pan, fill it with our cake batter, Smooth out the top and bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 35 to 40 minutes or until it is set and no longer jiggling. While the cake cools completely, we're going to melt some chocolate in a double boiler, about 8 ounces worth, and pour out onto a sheet pan. We're going to spread it out into a very thin layer, pound it down a couple times to make it nice and smooth, and freeze it for 10 minutes or until it's lost its sheen. Then being very careful not to scrape the metal, we're going to use a lemon zester to make some short and curly chocolate curls, some short and curlies, that we're going to toss with some cocoa powder before placing in the freezer until we're ready to use it. In the meantime, we're going to scrape our cooled cake into a mixing bowl, add a half cup of whole milk, and add more milk as necessary until you reach a doughy consistency that we then are going to shape into chocolate balls and place on a parchment-lined baking sheet before coating in molten chocolate and rolling in our short and curlies. Now these are chocolate salty balls that I think Chef himself would recognize, and man, Chef's balls are are tasty, but do they hold a candle to Cartman's chili? Do you like it? Do you like it, Scott? I call it Mr. and Mrs. Tenerman chili. Oh my god! That's right, we're making chili out of Cascabel chilies, Guajillo chilies, Ancho chilies, and Scott Tenerman's parents. We're going to start this chili much like Kevin's famous chili from The Office by removing the seeds, removing the stems, and cutting them all into one inch pieces that, that we can then place into a dry fry pan and toast over medium heat until barely smoking and fragrant. Then while the pan is still hot but not too hot, we're going to add about a cup and a half of chicken stock, bring it to a bare simmer, cover, remove from the heat, and allow to steep for about half an hour before placing into the bowl of a food processor. Now this is a slightly different method. I found that it's a lot easier than grinding the dry peppers so long as your food processor is plugged in. We're going to pulse that a few times before adding half a cup of corn flour for thickening, maybe a tablespoon of dried oregano, two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder, 
and a tablespoon of freshly ground cumin. Go ahead and process that for about two minutes or until completely smooth and set aside while we combine one finely minced habanero, two finely minced jalapenos, a chopped onion, and one crushed clove of garlic. Now, according to some very morbid articles that I've read online, human tastes most like pork, so we're going to use a boneless pork shoulder that we're going to cut into half inch pieces along with squeezing a pound of uncured chorizo out of its casing. We're then going to brown the sausage over medium high heat, rendering out all the fat and breaking it into little pieces and then browning our pork in the rendered sausage fat. Make sure those pieces are good and brown, that you build up a nice fond on the bottom of the pot, which we're then going to dump our vegetables into, sweat them for a few minutes before deglazing with a whole Mexican beer. Scrape up all that good stuff off the bottom of the pot, add our spice paste and another cup and a half of chicken stock. Add our meat back to the pot, and I forgot to film it, but you want to add two 14 ounce cans of chopped tomatoes to our chili before covering with the lid slightly ajar and simmering for three to four hours or until the meat is completely tender and the sauce is thickened. Season with salt and pepper as necessary and prepare to impress your school bully at the Chili Con Carnival cook-off. Add some shredded cheddar and freshly chopped chives if you want to really bring out the flavor of Mr. and Mrs. Tenerman. Now this might be a really tasty way to get rid of your worst enemy's parents, but what it really needs is some cream friche. Sit down, sit down, I've made you all breakfast again. Aw, oh, crap. Now, what I have for you is a nice goat cheese and heirloom tomato frittata. And we're going to top that with a little cream fraiche. Randy's frittata sounds like the perfect breakfast to have after a long night of making cake balls and chili, so I'm going to start with half a dozen shallots shaved thinly on a mandolin. Now, unless you're a trained professional like myself, make sure you use a hand guard. Ow! Okay, now that we've dug our hand guard out of the back of our closet, we're ready to shave our shallots. We're going to cut these into eighth inch slices that we're then going to separate into little rings and prepare for a low temperature fry. Shallots have a lot of moisture in them. We don't want to drop them into high heat. They will explode. Start them at 250 degrees and raise them to 350 and remove them once blonde. Not dark brown, but blonde. They will continue to darken outside of the oil. Now it's time to address the heirloom tomato part of our heirloom tomato frittata. We're going to chop up three large heirloom tomatoes, scooping out the seeds and goop in the middle before chopping into one inch pieces. We're then going to heat two tablespoons each butter and olive oil in a 10 inch cast iron pan. Whisked together, whisked it, whisked to, whisked together, whisk together six eggs with one cup of milk, salt, pepper, and four ounces of crumbled goat cheese. Stir just to combine, work on your enunciation, and place the butter and olive oil over medium high heat until foaming subsides and add one small chopped shallot. Saute over medium heat until softened and add one crushed clove of garlic and saute for an additional 30 seconds or until fragrant. Add our chopped heirloom tomatoes, increase the heat to medium high, and cook until most of the liquid has evaporated and the tomatoes are soft. Then add our egg and goat cheese mixture. Over medium heat, constantly drag your wooden spoon across the bottom of the pan. This creates a smaller curd and thus more tender eggs later on. Once the eggs become thick, place in a 350 degree oven for 15 to 20 minutes or until the eggs are set. Hack yourself off a slice, plate it up with some fried shallots, some freshly chopped chives, and let's dig in. Oh, wait a second, I think I'm forgetting something. Last night I remember combining one pint of heavy cream with a couple tablespoons of buttermilk, stirring well to combine, covering, and letting sit out at room temperature overnight, thus creating cream friche, which I'm gonna place a nice dollop on top of our, oh yeah, <clears throat> oh, sorry, on top of our frittata. Now, it's rare that I clean my plate on this show, but it's even rarer that something is so good that I go back for seconds. Randy Marsh, you win the South Park special. All right, so guys, like I was saying, Colossal Cluster Fest is June 2nd through the 4th in San Francisco, and they're going to be featuring vendors serving foods from shows like South Park, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and Seinfeld. And I'm going to be competing in a South Park Chili Con Carnival cook-off with SPQR's Michelin starred Matthew Ocarino and Sarah and Evan Rich from Rich Table. So if you want to come down and see my face and see my ass get thoroughly handed to me in a chili cook-off, come on down to Colossal Cluster Fest on June 2nd.